G'day. Lando Norris is the real deal. He was born in Bristol on the 13th of November 1999 and today he races under the number four for McLaren and is widely regarded as one of the best drivers in the world, finishing sixth in last year's F1 World Drivers Championship. I was there when this fresh-faced Brit finished 12th in his very first F1 race at the 2019 Australian Grand Prix. So what's he like? Well, I find him in the paddock to be great fun. There I see a young man enjoying the thrill of driving the world's best cars. He's smiley, he's happy, and openly shows his emotions, and that's something that can't be said for all F1 drivers. Obviously, F1 is reasonably new to him, so as yet, he's not become jaded. One thing that's clear to me is he's super confident with the media and often just tells it like it is. He'll inject his personality into interviews. Is this Ted's notebook? Yes, it is. I remember the Brazil Grand Prix last year in the paddock when Ted Kravitz was the last journo to interview Lando at the back of the garage, but his cameraman was nowhere to be seen. Lando launched into him jokingly, telling him his time was about to expire, ribbing Ted, saying that the cameraman should have been there. The 24-year-old was taking it right up to the seasoned 49-year-old Sky journalist. For me, it was fun to watch, and I see that side of his personality often. What's he like with fans? Fantastic. He'll stop for autographs and selfies when he's not needed urgently elsewhere, and gives them his attention for that moment, which, as you can imagine, delights a good many fans. Now, I've seen other drivers sign stuff, where they don't even look at the person or say anything, just hand it back and walk away, making no connection with that fan of any sort. That always strikes me as cold and uninspiring, but I don't see that with Lando. He's excellent with fans. So let's go back in time. He was born in Bristol to Belgian mum Siska and British dad Adam, and they are lovely people. Adam uh, was listed in the top 500 wealthiest people in Britain in 2019. He made his money running pensions direct but now he runs pure scooters and full marks to him because he's got many of the drivers scooting around at the track on his particular product. I get on really well with Adam and I do love his eclectic sense of dress. Lando has two sisters, Flo, a promising equestrian rider and Siska, same name as mum, yes. He also has an older brother, Oliver, who is married with a child, making Lando an uncle. So where did Lando develop his passion for motorsport? Well, it goes back to 2008 when he finished 35th in the Super 1 National Championship. He raced karts until 2014, finishing in the top three in 10 different categories. From 2014 to 18, he competed in no less than 16 different series, achieving five series wins, including the FIA Formula 3 European Championship in 2017. And in 2018, he was runner up to George Russell in the F2 Championship. I took this pick on media day prior to that final race in Abu Dhabi. But that wasn't the first pick I took of him. Uh, this was it, going back to Media Day 2018 Japanese GP, where he did an FP1 session in the McLaren the following day. So how did he go in his rookie year, 2019? He scored his first points in Bahrain, a sixth. His first podium in Austria came in 2020 during COVID. The following year, he had four podiums. Imola, Monza, Monaco and Austria in the points for the first 10 races before his Hungarian GP crash. And he only dipped out on scoring points that year in two races, Hungary and Spa. If you followed Lando for all of his F1 time, you'll know that there was quite an infatuation with the media, him and milk. That came from one mention in a WTF1 video. A lot of milk, because I love milk. But that milk reference just doesn't come up anymore. Like a lot of the F1 drivers, he moved to Monaco and is good mates with fellow Monaco residents, Max Verstappen and George Russell. But what does he drive away from the track? Well, last year he took delivery of this custom-built McLaren 765 LT Spider. He recently sold a 72 Fiat 500 Jolly at auction. That was the first car he ever bought with his own money. And what's his dream car? A Pagani Zonda. What are his other passions? Well, he loves luxury watches, and I know he has to wear a Richard Mille at the track, but away from the track he can wear what he wants, and he has a sizable collection. And then, of course, there's golf. He played in the Netflix Cup recently, just before the Vegas Grand Prix. He's certainly no scratch handicapper, and over the last six months or so, he's mentioned that he hasn't really played a lot of golf. I guess you can't do a video about Lando unless you mention Carlando. And that relationship has been huge on social media. Carlos, who's five years older than Lando, was his teammate in 2019 and 2020. It's unusual for teammates to be so close, and I guess Carlos, being five years older than him, was somewhat of a mentor to his younger teammate. And even when Carlos left McLaren for Ferrari in 2021, 
the pair were still close. And I remember this encounter at the start of the 2021 season. It was pre-season testing and the pair arrived at exactly the same time with Carlos taking the opportunity of ribbing his old teammate. As an F1 photographer, I can tell you that the pics of the pair of them are always in demand by my Insta and YouTube audience. It's a genuine friendship that certainly extends past team boundaries. Have a look at these two pictures. They were taken in Japan and just outside the paddock was a wall of pictures of drivers and the pair took an opportunity to deface each other's print. And what does Lando's signature look like? This is it. Lando's good mates with Dutch DJ Martin Garrix, but does he party? Rarely is the answer. He's got some pretty solid people around him to keep him focused and grounded. And I'm talking about his management, uh, Mark Berryman from Ad Management, a fellow Brit who was appointed by Lando's family many years ago to, to look after him. And his trainer is another Brit, John Malvin, who runs pioneered athletic performance. He's been at Lando's side for a good many years too. His first girlfriend was Luisa Oliveira from Portugal. I first met, when did I first meet her? It was uh, at post-season testing in 2021, although they were a little bit coy about that. But my social media audience couldn't get enough pics of the pair. Some of my biggest posts of 2022 featured them. And this is the last picture I shot of the pair in Hungary, 2022. After that, they parted ways and he's not been seen in the company of any other female in the paddock since. On the social media front, he's big on Instagram. 7.3 million fans on his main account, but did you know he has a secondary account? Yes, LN4, which is a bit more commercial, uh, features more posts than the other page, and he's very hands-on with his social media, although he does employ a switched-on agency to coordinate things. His merchandise is extremely popular, and as a brand, there are few bigger in F1 than Lando Norris. Not all drivers walk the tracks, but certainly Lando does. And while he probably doesn't need it, especially to learn about the track, it's more quality time to spend with his engineers. And here are two of the people that he's closest with in the team, Jose Manuel Lopez Garcia and Will Joseph. I'm pretty lucky with Lando. I often get smiles and some lovely gestures from the driver. And particularly when he has a good result, he's more than happy to acknowledge my lens. And of course that makes my pictures far better than if he's just walking past. Let's talk about fashion now. And uh, he, like a couple of other drivers, has worn in casual clothes on a number of days. What have I seen him in? This Arabic thobe for the last race of the year 2023. Of course, I've seen him in his own merch. And when it comes to shoes, I've spotted him in Nike high tops, Golden Goose, Puma, K-Swiss team shoes, Alpine Stars racing shoes with the British flag on them. He's developed an interest in photography lately, like his ex-teammate Daniel Ricciardo. And like Daniel, shoots with a Leica. We haven't seen Lando Norris win his first race yet, but we have seen him on the podium a number of times, and I do love his celebration with the bottle. I'm surprised that he's never broken one given the number of times that he's done this. And has it only been in Formula One? No, he used to do it in F2 as well. Going back to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix of last year, I was quite surprised when he walked in after a, a couple of weeks break with a goatee. And throughout the year, he was spotted with varying degrees of beard and moustache. What is his height? Well, we put that to rest at the start of 2023 when I cajoled him into letting me measure him for a YouTube video, which you'll find in the description below. It was a great video, and I can tell you that we did confirm his height at 177 centimetres. Things at the moment are going very well for the McLaren driver, but the journey has not always been easy. He admitted recently that he'd had some mental health issues, saying, what would he do if he wasn't any good at driving? That was all he knew. But I think his results suggest that he is pretty good at driving. And could he win a world championship? Yeah, I think he could. While I was preparing for this video, I was asking myself, what was the happiest I've seen him? And I think it was probably his Monza 1-2 with Daniel on the podium in 2021. Now I hung around for quite some time at the end of the night to get him coming out and it was quite dark, but I did manage to get this delightful beaming smile and one not too dissimilar to this one, my last pick of him in 2023. And the saddest moment, uh, definitely Russia, 2021. He went from jubilant on Saturday after snaring pole to distraught on Sunday after giving up a race winning lead. How did it happen? Well, he didn't come in when it started to rain a few laps from the end of the race. And unfortunately, he aquaplaned off the track at turn five, 
giving up the lead to Lewis Hamilton. I remember watching him from the main grandstand opposite Park Ferme as he came back and he sat in his car for a very long time. George came over to console him, but by that stage the damage was done. He was crushed, but he did have the grace though to go and congratulate Lewis Hamilton before he went to get weighed. At the time I thought that showed great strength and maturity. I see some comments on social media from people who perhaps don't understand Lando, don't work closely with him, and they say he's arrogant and cocky. Well, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with being cocky if you've got the goods to back it up, but I've not ever seen arrogant when it comes to Lando Norris. And one final thing before I leave you, Team Quadrant. This is a passion of Lando's, effectively it's a gaming and lifestyle brand, which is focused on entertaining fans and building one of the biggest communities through gaming, content, and esports. Now, a lot of you will know what that means, and if you don't, you're probably with me. I was just about finished with the editing of this video, and I wake up to news that Lando Norris has extended his contract with McLaren, clearly enjoying his time there. And I think for all those Lando fans, that will be welcomed news. And at this point, can I ask one favor? Yeah? Could you please hit the like button? If you've enjoyed the video, that is. And subscribe, or become a member if you'd like to support the channel. These are available at kimelman.com, sensational book. In fact, there's a book on every single driver. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. I was there when this fresh-faced Brit, f***ing hell that's hard. Oh, f*** off. I haven't even got that microphone anywhere near me. <laughs>